food. Welcome back to the channel and happy Halloween. It's that special time of year again where the leaves turn orange, it gets a little bit cooler outside and it becomes socially acceptable to invite children to a house under the promise of candy. But for me, my favorite part of the spooky season is turning the lights off, getting cozy and putting on a movie so scary that it makes my farts fall out of my pants. So for the first ever Milky's Halloween special, I thought it was only appropriate that we talk about a Halloween classic, Halloween. Specifically today, I thought it would be fun for us to take a look at the most universally disliked movie in the Halloween franchise. I'm talking, of course, about Halloween Resurrection. God, I fucking hate this movie so much. Why do I hate Halloween Resurrection? <clears throat> You're about to find out. Releasing in 2002, Resurrection is the eighth installment in the now 13 deep Halloween movie franchise. It doesn't actually matter if you haven't seen the seven movies previous to Resurrection because this film makes an effort to not have any relevance to any of them, except for one very serious issue which we're going to talk about in a moment. Before I get ahead of myself though, we're going to rewind a little bit just so everyone can understand where a lot of people's hatred for this film comes from. So Halloween Resurrection picks up three years after the events of Halloween H2O. What an awful name for a movie by the way, they may as well have just called it. Spoiler alert for a now 26 year old movie, H2O ends with Laurie Strode finally killing Michael Myers 20 years after their first encounter in the 1978 classic. Oh no, I'm certainly dead. Well, uh, psych, bazinga, spit on it and reverse it because who's that standing outside the window? I'll give you a hint. It's not the Mormons. In the opening scene, Halloween Resurrection retcons what I and most other people would call a pretty solid ending to the Laurie Strode timeline. They do this by explaining away Michael Myers' death as an extreme case of mistaken identity. That's right. It was all just one big whoopsie daisy, a kerfuffle, a clumsy wumsy. Everyone in the writer's room thought this was clever but I don't. So three years after the events of H2O, Laurie has developed a serious case of PTSD as a result of bad writing. As a result of killing an innocent person and has since spent the time between movies in a psychiatric hospital. We're led to believe that Laurie's trauma has left her in some kind of vegetative state and that she's been there for quite some time. This, however, it turns out was all just an elaborate ruse because this movie is stupid. In reality, it turns out that Laurie is all good and that she just faked her illness entirely to lure Michael or something. It's not made very clear at all. Inevitably, Michael shows up one night at the hospital to finish Laurie off once and for all. Oh dang, that would have hurt. A chase scene then follows through the hallway of the asylum, which eventually ends up on the roof, where Laurie then springs the trap like she's the fucking wily e. coyote that snags Michael by the leg and dangles him over the building via crane. How did a patient have access to the rooftop of a psychiatric hospital or access to any heavy equipment? Unclear. Moving on. Unfortunately for us, there are still 80 minutes left of this movie, so Michael kills the franchise, sorry, he kills Laurie, and then disappears into the night without a trace. After that, we cut to a college campus in present day 2002. Here, we meet our main characters, Sarah, her best friend, her love interest, and Buster Rhymes. These people do have names, but like the majority of this movie, they're neither interesting nor are they memorable, so I genuinely have no idea what their names are. Anyway, I'm going to do my best to sum up the first 40 minutes of this movie quickly so that we can move on to something that's more interesting for the both of us. So Sarah and, um friend have won a competition to get onto an internet reality show based in the Myers house. Think of it like iCarly crossed with ghost hunters but all the lights are off and they're hiding from Dan Schneider. Accompanied by his sidekick and or girlfriend is none other than Buster Rhymes who is the mastermind behind this whole thing and who just does an awful awful acting job in this entire movie but we'll get to that. 
Buster Rhymes explains to all the contestants that in addition to the house being set up with cameras and microphones, each of them will be wearing their own personal camera for the duration of their stay in the Myers house. Do you know what that means? Because unfortunately, I know what that means. Does this give you motion sickness? Too bad because it's a found footage movie now, so enjoy not being able to see anything that's happening on screen for the next 60 minutes. On the scale of things that I'm not a fan of, found footage movies are up there in the top three right alongside 9-11 and Toy Story 4. After this long piece of exposition, we cut over to the Myers house, where we can see the camera control room in the garage. With all these cameras around, there's no way anyone could slip by undetected. Right? Right? Wrong. So now we enter what I'd like to call the padding for time phase of the movie. Ah, oh, Buster Rhymes, the fuck? Where our contestants enter the house and I don't know, they look around for clues or something. There's not much to see here. And like I said before, it's basically just padding out the runtime, but I do want to point out one scene that I find particularly funny. So in this scene, we have our character Rudy and he's checking out the kitchen, looking for clues. And he says this. You gonna taste a 40 year old fennel? I don't. It's gotta be rotten. That's strange. What? It smells fresh. The implications of this are that Michael Myers, the six foot four serial killer who never takes off his mask, goes shopping semi-regularly for fresh herbs, which I just find hilarious. Anyway, we fast forward to nighttime and the gang has now officially split up to look for clues, which is super convenient for Michael because... We're gonna get her back for that. Watch me. Hello, we've tried to reach you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> Luckily for Michael, no one in the entire house heard the screams of murder coming from upstairs. Even though three minutes prior, it was established that you would be able to hear this. Jen? Gotcha! After some more dicking about, we get what is probably the best scene in the whole movie. To spice up the show a little, Buster Rhymes decides to dress up as Michael Myers and walk around the house all menacingly to try and scare the contestants. While doing this, he unknowingly runs into the real Michael Myers, who for some reason he thinks is the dead cameraman guy from earlier. Believing this, Buster Rhymes proceeds to unleash a verbal assault on Michael Myers. Why well, are you catch me anyway? I ain't telling you to be Michael Myers. I'll play on Michael Myers. But you can't come around and say I've just been the same shit. You're gonna ruin the whole effect. I right, get it? The hell is wrong with you? I said what you looking at me like that for. Huh? You don't get it? You don't get it? You sure ain't working up there or something? While this is happening, we have one of our contestants down in the basement who's found and accessed some kind of strange sub-basement area. Here she discovers where Michael has presumably been hiding for all of these years. While she's down here, you might be wondering, does she find anything particularly interesting about Michael Myers? Does she learn maybe his weakness? No. She finds some dead rats and then she dies. Back in the main house, Buster Rhymes gets his back busted. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> Me, Freddy. Back in the main house, Buster Rhymes gets his back busted and just in time because Michael finally reveals himself. Can't scare us, Jen. You're gonna have to do better than that. <laughs> so that the writers could get this movie wrapped up nice and quickly, Michael goes around and kills most of the remaining cast in quick succession in scenes that are sadly against YouTube terms of service for me to show. Eventually, the only two who remain are Sarah and Buster Rhymes. Sarah jumps up to one of the mounted cameras and pleads with her love interest, Deckard. Deckard, it just so happens, has been watching this horror unfold just across town at a Halloween party with about 30 other people and has so far done literally nothing to help. Ignoring the fact that Sarah clearly has a working phone on her at this time, Deckard uses the power of AOL Online Messenger to update Sarah on Michael's whereabouts. Using this knowledge, Sarah sneaks around Michael and successfully makes it up onto the roof where she is presumably safe. Now. In this scene here, it doesn't seem very far to jump from the roof, and given the possibility of being killed by a serial killer, I would take the chance of jumping off the roof. But, for unknown reasons, Sarah decides to jump back into the house. Once inside, Sarah then meets back up with Buster Rhymes, who proceeds to fucking spin-kick Michael Myers in the face before launching him out the window. Fucker! Ah! The two then share a nice moment together, but unfortunately this is cut short by Deckard. 
Buster Rhymes gets stabbed and Sarah escapes to the garage, where she then fights Michael with a chainsaw while screaming some of the worst delivered dialogue I've ever heard. Buster! This is for By wildly swinging the chainsaw, however, Sarah manages to cut some wires, short out the chainsaw, and set the entire garage on fire. There's sparks and explosions. It's it's all quite silly. Due to the explosion, Sarah is now trapped under a shelf, and it looks like all hope is lost until... Trick or treat! Motherfucker. Buster Rhymes then electrocutes Michael Myers in the balls and then burns the house down with him inside it. Sarah and Buster Rhymes then escape, Michael gets sent to the morgue, and it all seems like a happy ending. <coughs> so, what do I think of Halloween Resurrection? Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. We're going to start with scariness, or in more scientific terms, atmosphere. In the entire 90 minutes of this movie, there are maybe one or two solid atmospheric moments, and these happen in the opening scenes. After that, it's about 60 minutes of yap, followed by Buster Rhymes doing capoeira in a garage. There's nothing particularly atmospheric about this movie, and realistically, you could delete Michael Myers, you could put in any generic serial killer of your choice, and apart from the first scene, nothing about the entire film changes. This gives me a nice segue to talk about the storyline of this movie. I'm a fan of the Halloween series, so this is going to be biased as shit, but this is my video, so I don't care. It's not that Halloween Resurrection is a ridiculously uninspired, generic, spooky movie, I guess you would call it, which it is. It's the fact that the writers of this movie took an intentional dump on what I would call a fantastic ending to a series, only to revive it in a way that doesn't contribute anything to the lore and wastes the audience time for 90 minutes. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on is the special effects in this movie. Unfortunately, Halloween Resurrection doesn't take any particularly bold chances with special effects. There are a few decent kill scenes in this movie, which I've unfortunately had to censor in order to not have this video taken down. Uh, but overall, the practical effects, if they were used more, it would be awesome, but it is quite underwhelming. If I had to put a number on this movie, I'd call it a 3 out of 10. Go watch something else. If you're a fan of the Halloween series, definitely do not watch this piece of shit. If you're not a fan and you've never seen a Halloween movie, it is definitely serviceable, but there are so many better things you could watch. Anyway, thank you all for watching the first ever Milky's Halloween special. That's it. See you later.